Hello everyone. Welcome to another international relations capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. Today our topic is the recent visit to Washington of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. This has been characterized as the beginning of a new chapter in India US relations. This is not the first time that visits have been characterized like that. Even before there have been important visits at the highest level between the two countries which appeared to create new chapters uh, but then india us relations have never been very steady it is often compared to a roller coaster ride so between these successful visits there have always also been differences of opinion and sometimes difficulty of understanding each other so this particular visit has been characterized as historic because it attained several objectives which are very important for both the countries but it has become important also because just before a few weeks before the visit the situation between the two countries was not so good there were two major problems first was the question of india's position on the russia ukraine war india did not condemn russia and continued to import oil etc from russia and thus creating the impression that uh, india was not observed with the sanctions which were imposed by the west on russia there were reasons for it and uh, we took a rather neutral position but at the same time prime minister of india made it very clear that this is not the time for war and uh, there must be peace uh, the west was not happy with india's position because they kept saying that how can a democracy like india uh, support uh, you know invasion of sovereignty invasion of another country and also continuing war etc but over a period of time the westerners have come to realize that perhaps the indian position had helped india to play some kind of a role in bringing about a resolution of the conflict this has not happened uh, but uh, during the g20 meeting in bali there was one common statement which was accepted by both the sides both the united states and russia and uh, the president of the united states in fact mentioned that it was mr modi's active uh, support that led to this understanding in the bali meeting so which means the criticism of india's position was toned down at some point the other issue between india and the united states was that the us position that india had ceased to be a democracy very leading intellectuals politicians ngos etc started saying that the treatment of minorities in india was of great concern to them and they were afraid that uh, india was not following democratic norms so this went on we they kept saying that india's position was uh, not favorable to democracy and also that democracy itself is in danger in the united states so this in this atmosphere a visit was not possible normally when a new president takes over in the united states the indian prime minister visits in the first year this time it happened only in the fourth year uh, because also the prediction that uh, prime minister modi had made that the next government would be a trump government when he was in houston so that also the democrats were a little upset about it for these reasons such a meeting did not take place before then why did how did it take place now and that also also is is quite clear both india and the united states are getting more and more concerned about the posture of china vis-a-vis -vis these two countries in 2020 you all know that uh, they occupied our positions on our side of the line of actual control in in ladakh and the chinese have not completely withdrawn so they have withdrawn some some sectors some sectors they are still sitting there 
and there is no de-escalation of tensions and the issue continues. Of course, negotiations are taking place, things are moving here and there, but no solution. And uh, that is of concern to us because though they have pledged to, uh, you know, not to aggravate the crisis, but uh, we cannot rest till they have withdrawn from the original positions. So India has been in the forefront waiting for the Chinese to withdraw. At the same time, relations between the United States and China also deteriorated. Uh, you heard about the balloon incident. The Americans shot down a spy balloon of Russia, which was flying over the United States, which, which led to some exchanges um, as to how this happened and what happened, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that brought the U.S.-China relationship still further down. And then efforts were made to normalize relations, uh, and um, China resisted. In, first of all, in its position that it is with Russia and the, on the Ukraine war. And they also expected uh, Russia to support China if there was any conflict in Taiwan or any other area of interest to China. So all this on both sides, on India's side as well as on the US side, there is considerable concern about the Chinese position. And the agreement that was signed between China and Russia last year was also of great concern because they had said that they would unconditionally support each other in any kind of uh, conflict. Then just before the visit, uh, the State Department, uh, Secretary of State went to uh, Beijing, even met Xi Jinping. Uh, but uh, what he claimed after the visit was simply that this visit has been able to stabilize the relationship between US and China not making it any better. So they also had their concern. And um, so United States was wanting to keep India on its side in this whole question of peace in the Indian Ocean region. And they were not able to extend all the support to India, the arms, ammunition, money, etc. to India, because India refused to accept that uh, Quad, the group of four countries was not a, was a military alliance. India refused to accept it as a military alliance. They said it's only a dialogue. And therefore, the United States could not equip India to meet with the Chinese threat if it becomes necessary. So, but the United States changed its mind and offered to India that if India was willing, they were willing to, they were also willing to give an exception to the rule that these arms and armaments and technology etc. will only go to allies. So in other words, they made an exception that even if India is not an ally, it will be given the same treatment that other allies of the United States would get in terms of technology, manufacturing, and various other things which are required to strengthen the defense of India. So, then it uh, appeared during those uh, three days that he was in the United States. Mr. Um, Modi gave a lot of uh, support and uh, he signed agreements, reached understandings on very many issues. In fact, the whole range. But the most important aspect of the visit was that some exceptional technology, defense related technology, was pledged to India, uh, particularly the, uh, the um, jet engines required for our aircraft to be manufactured in India because it is a general electric and a HAL contract, but, uh, and also it requires congressional approval. But still, in principle, between the two heads of state, it was agreed that this would be made available. And this is exceptional because this kind of jet engines are not provided to countries which are not. It's called the GE414. You must have heard about it. This is meant for our aircraft, LCA MC2. So this is the one which attracted the most uh, attention. And uh, General Electric and HL have uh, already 
uh, sign some kind of a an understanding. Then there was ma there's a major agreement on uh, space um, to between ISRO and NASA, including human space flights. As you know, India has been planning and preparing for a manned flight to the moon or to the space at least. And uh, this needs more support. So uh, there, is an, there is an agreement called Artemis Agreement or Artemis Accord uh, for the United States to support space activities to other countries. So we have not signed it. Now we have agreed to sign it, which means we have a quantum jump in cooperation between India and the United States in space technology. Um, so basically, technology related or defense related technology is now available to India without India being an ally of the United States. Just as in 2005 and up to 2008, United States agreed that even if India has not signed the NPT, India will be given nuclear technology. So this is very similar, almost history repeating itself. But the United States was unable to supply equipment and material, nuclear material to India because India had not signed the NPT. And we are not willing to sign also. But they decided that regardless of that, we will support India because of its importance, increasing importance in the world. And so the nuclear deal was signed. But nuclear deal, we also know that it was not fully successful because India's liability law, we have discussed it many times. So similar problems could arise even in this case, because some of these need approval at higher levels, like the, like the foundation level, etc., and the availability, and so on. But this has been accomplished. Then in other areas like climate change, supply chains, very many smaller agreements have also, also been reached. And uh, the cooperation and the confidence between the two countries in defense has been demonstrated by the fact that each country will be able to send a liaison officer to the other country's military establishments. This is exceptional. Because unless you trust somebody completely, you will not allow a foreign government to, men, to keep a liaison officer in one of the laboratories or at the headquarters. So this is something very significant. Shows the And India will also allow uh, US uh, experts uh, to be employed, appointed in our military establishments. So from a, from a uh, situation where we could not even purchase some of these equipments before we are not a military ally. Now we have been given the facility, like it happened in the case of the nuclear deal, facility to uh, to require or, or, or purchase any of these restricted weapons. How did they deal with um, the Ukraine situation? Of course, in the joint statement, there is no specific reference to India's position. But one thing which is common is that uh, there are consequences for the Ukraine war, particularly for developing countries, and therefore the war uh, should end. And also the two countries agreed as before that they will be willing to give humanitarian assistance to Russia and to Ukraine. These are very common points which already existed that has been uh, formalized. Then uh, smaller things like visa, because technology is cooperation is improving and you have to technology cooperation growing. The Indian technologies have to go to the United States. So the visa is required, various kinds of visa, particularly H1 visa, which is a professional visa. Now there are many restrictions, and even generally on US visa, there are many restrictions in India. There's a long backlog. So the, both the presidents decided that this should be uh, corrected, uh, and um, more facilities should be provided. And uh, one decision taken is that the United States will open consulates in Bangalore and uh, 
and Hyderabad. Uh, this injunction is clear. More Bangalore and Hyderabad as the high tech cities in India, and the presence of the American consulate in these countries. These countries will naturally enhance the cooperation uh, among us. The second issue about uh, uh, nuclear, uh, sorry, uh, about India's position, India's democracy, about which there were complaints. 70 congressional members um, wrote to the president saying that uh, this one must be raised with Prime Minister Narendra Modi so that our the questions relating to Indian democracy can be also uh, clarified. Um, and to make matters worse at that particular point, Barack Obama, the former President of the United States and also great friend of Mr. Modi, issued a statement at the time of the visit of the Prime Minister that if he got a chance to speak to the Prime Minister of India, he would have told him that if minority rights are not protected in India, India is likely to fall apart. Very serious statement he made. People do not know why he did it at that particular time, but this was a real provocation. And that too by uh, Mr. Obama, who has visited India twice as president, only US president who has visited India twice, and who created the Quad itself through cooperation in the Indian Ocean. So a person like that, to speak of India breaking up and so on, was a little bit too much. And that is why our finance minister said, Mr. Barack Obama should remember that he had bombed six Arab countries. He's talking about minority uh, rights of Muslims in India. And he's the man who bombed six Arab countries for one reason or the other. So that was a rather unpleasant uh, experience. And um, also, uh, Mr. Modi was asked a question about democracy in India. And he agreed to answer that because he normally does not entertain questions even in, in, in India. Uh, but in order to please the Americans and to remove any fears that they may have about democratic situation, he agreed to answer a question. And the question was raised by the Wall Street Journal correspondent. And Mr. Modi gave the right answer. The answer being that the Indian constitution provides for equality, fraternity, and liberty. And there's a court system, there is a very active press. All is ensure that no government can violate human rights of other people. And he put it very forcefully, and there was no, no further uh, question. So this is how the whole thing has been has been set up. So it is very clear that the uh, United States decided to offer this uh, equipment to us, and we decided to accept it. Both are very courageous steps. And so that is why we say that this is a new chapter in India-US relations. And um, though there have been such new chapters earlier, so this no, no new words could be found for it. And, in 2016, Mr. Modi said in the U.S. Congress that there will be a new, or in, uh, no music, no uh, a new symphony in India-U.S. relations. The 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 orchestra is the same, but they'll play new music. He said, but after that, we have had several problems with the United States itself. So all these have been forgiven and forgotten, and we now proceed to negotiate all these deals, sign them, meet the legal objections if there are any, and then proceed. This is being seen in the world. That is the most significance of this. The significance of this particular new chapter is that this is seen as the first step being taken by the United States in India to shape a new world order. Because at the moment, there is no world order. US, UN is not functioning properly. Everybody is doing things on its own. There is no international cooperation. So when all that is there, uh, so it will be necessary to start a new world order. 
So by India and the United States consciously deciding, in spite of all the issues, that they will stand together in the future, is a clear signal they are not, that they are not with China and Russia, Afghanistan or Pakistan. So a clear division between the autocrats and democrats was expected. But that division came about in a particular way in this visit. Because regardless of the uh, pro provisions or the policies of United States and India in other respects, they decided that they will have a common future through technology and defense cooperation. And defense cooperation being most important in the face of fear of China in India as well as in the United States. So this has been an exceptional visit. India has gained considerably in terms of technology and other benefits. And the United States itself will benefit if India is with the United States. And therefore, both sides are happy because no side was happy during this period that uh, nobody was happy with this position. Everyone wanted a new world. So here, two countries have taken the lead, two important countries have taken the lead to give a signal that this will be the kind of role that these countries will play. And that has been the biggest achievement. Of course, it remains to be seen as to how much of these will be delivered. And, um, and therefore, uh, both sides will have to uh, be very, very uh, cautious in approaching these discussions and finally enabling us to fulfill the uh, concerns of the, of the two countries. So, it's been a great visit, not only in, uh, in terms of substance, but also in symbolism. There was a lot of pomp and uh, honor. And they were very friendly and uh, this visit was called state visit, even though uh, Mr. Modi is only a prime minister and the president cannot give a state visit to uh, prime ministers normally. So that's why they call it official state visit. And uh, since Biden came to power, only three prime presidents or prime ministers have been given the state visit. That is France, South Korea, and India. So our stature, our status in the international community besides the United States has also been raised. So, but like in other cases, we hope it will not happen that these contracts will not be, uh, you know, materialized or not. There's some concern about that, but still the commitment is there and there will certainly be a, a good equation between the two countries, even though such situations have developed in the past and it has still been a roller coaster time. But let us hope that this visit and the outcome of it will uh, mark a new beginning in their U.S. relations and will not be pushed into taking positions and on various issues. We will stay together regardless of these issues. And that's a major change in India-U.S. relations. Thank you.